So Joyce, again, so much to unpack. One of yeah. the things is this very room that we're recording in, you and I met as part of the Black Studies course yeah, as well. Yeah, we so did, 2017. Joyce is, 2017. Yeah, so yeah. Joyce has finished. I'm a bit slow, so I've got like, you know, a couple of more weeks left yeah. as well. <laughs> but you know, that's how it goes really. So I wanted to really talk to you. I mean, there's so much to talk about your work, but I wanted to talk about the Windrush inspiration and generation as well. And there was a particular slide, if we can go back to the slide with Claudia Jones. And for those who don't know, Claudia Jones, um, there's many stories. As we've told you, some of the stories today, people would dispute some of the facts and figures. Well, Claudia Jones was one of those who was involved in um, starting Notting Hill Carnival, well, the precursor to Notting Hill Carnival, which was the St Pancreas Carnival. She was involved in that as a director of some of the things that were going on in the area at the time. But she's such an amazing woman, and I guess she inspired, inspired you as a black feminist. Yeah. She was also yeah. classed as a Marxist as well. She yeah. came to this country because she'd been expelled from... Um, the US as well, from Trinidad and the US yeah, as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I've seen her there. So what was your reasoning for putting her into, she's such a key figure of the Windrush, what was your reason for including her in your exhibition? Well, because she's, so, she's such a determined character. And I think I was, it, when I was creating those portraits, I think I was drawing on, the, on each person's brilliance right. and kind of looking, looking towards their to what they did and thinking, well, you know, these people are, are quite extraordinary. And Claudia Jones, mm -hmm. you know, she was, she was, she had to leave Trinidad. She was, went to the US. She then had to leave the US, as you say. Mm -hmm. and, then, and still she was determined and still she was able to fight the, for the cause and fight for rights. And, you know, she was, um, she helped to raise money to pay for lots of, um, things that were happening during, in, in re response to mm. the Notting Hill riots. Okay. She paid for a lot of the, 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 the uh, you know, the fees for Absolutely, them yeah. to go to, for yeah. people going to court. So, you know, uh, and, and also I used to live in the area, I used to live in Notting Hill mm. and Labrook Grove. I'd spent a, a long time there, like mm. 20 odd years. And so the carnival is close to my heart. And isn't it disappointing that they just announced yesterday or today that the carnival know, is now cancelled? I know, so, I know. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really sad. I mean, you can, but it's, you can, you yeah. can understand why as well. Yeah. Um, and so because she had, she played such an important role, and like you say, not the only person mm. um, to start the carnival, and and because of her determination, mm. and she was a Marxist, and. Um, when I was when I was a young girl, I used to be a member of the Young Communist League. Oh, I did thought, you? Know? Yeah, I, thought, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, I, I love all that. I love. Yeah. The, I mean, yeah, yeah. She's she's an inspiration to me. And something else, that, um, I've only just noticed as well, but something else to that. I noticed in your art, you used a lot a lot of newspaper type clippings, is it, or the background? And like, obviously, she set up the West Indian newspaper, which was the first black newspaper in Britain. Yeah. At the time, so I'm just yeah. really keen. Was there a link between that? Or no, no. It, I mean, yes, yeah, she did do that, but no, I I use um, in those portraits, I use the Common Prayer Book pages oh, okay. that were left over from the previous um, uh, artwork, mm. Litany for Those at Sea. Right, okay. And I kind of like this idea that you can take pieces from past art pieces mm. and put them into the, you know, new ones. Mm. And so they, th that, that's it's the common bread prayer book pages are what's in the background. Yeah. And I suppose again, it links to as well with Claudia. She was one of the people that paid for Malcolm X to come here when he came to Britain and he came to Smith. I didn't know that. Yeah, so Did a little she? bit. Yeah, yeah, she actually paid. She was one of the people involved in bringing him here. But it's like that's amazing. Uh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> so it's just like watching how that influence of Windrush comes to now. And as you, you're a descendant of Windrush, effectively. Yeah, so yeah. you know, you have that impact as well with your work as well. And I'm just going to talk about some of the other influences that you mentioned as well. So um, you talked about emotional well-being. Uh, you talked about creativity coming out of the work, but also being a direct response from the sort of legacy of the Windrush generation. Mm. Does that make sense? And what I'm trying to get to with that as well is understanding that within this time now, where 73 years ago the Windrush generation came here, they spawned families and friends in here, as we heard yeah. Sue talk about earlier. Yeah. And now we're here talking about them 73 years ago having a scandal that's current today yeah. and I suppose it's yeah. reflective of your art in yeah. today's society yeah. as well well with litany of those uh, of those that see I wanted to include that to kind of say that this hostile environment is not anything new mm. um, as we know with colonialism that's been happening throughout throughout time um, and yeah yeah it's it's kind of 
it does mm. it does um, play out throughout my work. Yeah. yeah. You also mentioned we were talking yesterday to so the viewers. Now we was having a conversation about what we talk about today, and then you also really went in about talking about your emotional response compared to you said that you. I think it was something about your work isn't drawn out of emotion, otherwise you'd experience anger. Can you just allude on that? Can yeah, you remember, remember yeah, the yeah, yeah. It kind of there have been there have been like e even with the the piece where I respond to Elizabeth Fry being removed from the five pound note that really annoyed me. I mean, mm. I. I've not even used the right term of it, you know, <laughs> but it really annoyed me that that happened. And so I was able to make an art piece that reflected right. how annoyed I was. But of course, you know, you, you, you recreate it in a way that's uh, appropriate for an audience. Yeah. Um, I think I said, you know, that you don't want to censor yourself, but the, at the same time, you do have a responsibility when mm. you're making your artwork. Mm. To uh, try and reach a broader or a, mm. a broader audience, other than uh, maybe those that are on side with black feminism, for example. Mm. Um, but yes, it does. It does exercise some of that uh, some of that frustration. I'm, I'm yeah, able yeah. to I'm able to get it out through <laughs> my work. And um, I suppose again, we're talking about Birmingham Museum's who sponsored this event today and organised this event. And we're talking about legacy again with the generation of young children who may be watching this. We could be famous in a couple of years, you know. <laughs> but how would you sort of, you know, how would you sort of explain to young children what it is that you do and how it connects into the Windrush generation and what it means to them now? We talked earlier about 73 years. We talked about it not being a new thing, the way that people experience the sort of... I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully here, but I suppose we're looking at the scandal today because people that has marked now that's in people's minds today. Yeah. But it's we don't talk history, isn't yeah, it? seven yeah. years. But it took seventy years for us to get a National Wind Trust Day as well. So now that it's in the public cycle and we're still doing lots of work, how would you inform young people to express themselves through art? Well, to just really go with, I, I mean, it's a real old cliche to go with the heart mm. and to, you know, listen to what's happening around you and just and just get it out and write, it, you know, get it down for, in whatever format, at, at it, it, however it comes out mm. and just exercise it, get it out and then you can revisit the work and fine tune it as you go, go along. But it's, it's really important that young people learn to mm. use their voice and express themselves because mm. it's great things happen mm. when you start talking about I think it's um, Patricia Hill Collins talks about when you if, if you're in a position of oppression it's a, you're almost in a position of I, I don't want to use the word privilege because that, that's going to give the wrong give the wrong message. Mm. But you're able to see things mm. that other people can't see. You can see the cracks. Mm. You know, if you're in a if you're in a real position of privilege and you're you don't suffer from any uh, oppressions or mm. any problems, you don't see the cracks. But mm. when you're sit sitting from a certain standpoint, you get to see that cra those cracks. And it's worth talking about those cracks because those cracks can make change. Mm. So. That's what I would say to young people. And you know. I suppose we're influenced as well by the simple fact that, you know, we talked about some of the exhibitions. I was talking to Lindsay, who introduced the programme, talking about the past is now, decolonising the museums. There's yeah. all this activity and work taking place. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose as an artist, it's for people like you to capture that and, you know, show your emotional response back to those kind of campaigns. Yeah, would yeah. Would you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it, it, it encourages people to... to uh, you know, you bounce off each other, right? So mm. there was um, in the in the race report that we that we recently um, um, received, there was some criticism around decolonialism. But mm. decolonialism, decolonialism is an important body of uh, academic body of work mm. that looks at um, you know locations and gives voices to people yeah. that otherwise wouldn't have voices. You know, that wouldn't be able mm. to speak. So. And yeah. I suppose people have taken that and they're using this word woke in a, in a reversal of what it should really mean. But people really need to hold on to the fact that, you know, people are talking about a culture now, but it's reflected of the country's past. Yeah. And it's also that embarrassment of the country's past. Yeah, yeah, it is embarrassing. And you have to, uh, you know, you have to kind of uh, be self-reflective in that space. Yeah. Uh, everyone has to be self-reflective in that space because... Um, it might be that uh, you've you've lost your own identity, mm. or that you've lost self-esteem, or that you're from a position of privilege. Mm. And unless we reflect, we you know, with anything, we can't move forward, really, mm. can we? 
And there's one thing, really important thing that I wanted to talk about as well. So you're an art, multidisciplinary artist as well. And um, next year is the 40th anniversary of the Black Arts Movement. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I just thought it was really key to end on that point, really, and just talk about your sort of inspiration from the Black Arts Movement, but also for us to highlight what their contribution was. Because uh, for those who don't know, they were a group of artists that couldn't get work in the UK, displaying their work, exhibitions or galleries wouldn't show their work and they formed this organi organisation that would actually show their work. There's quite a few different reincarnations of it. So yeah. you have those from the 50s and 60s. Yeah. So you're the artist, you tell me about it. Yeah, <laughs> well there's a black art movement in America, isn't there? Absolutely. And uh, then well, there's yeah. a, the black art group yeah. in the UK. Yeah. And the black art group in the UK was starting to do something quite interesting in that they were doing a cut and paste mm. and moving things out of the political into something something new, mm. which is now being picked up in contemporary arts mm. and contemporary work. So what is contemporary um, art? Can you just explain? Contem well, current. Current. Like, since yeah, so like, people. you know, those fresh, you know, fresh work out there. Um, I think... Um, uh, the Museum Trust have, have got Andrew Jackson coming in next week, so yeah, you think we work like Andrew Jackson. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I, I mean the Black Art Group. Yeah, that there. I I, met, I li went to a talk that was uh, presented by Eddie Chambers. Yeah, Eddie. Um, I think it was about eight years ago, yes. and it was one of his pieces, which is around. It it is it's a triptych, and he. He cut, he's cut up the Union Jack and, and yeah. placed it into a, the swatch sticker. I can't remember what the title's yeah. called now. I haven't got it in my, in my notes. But um, work like that is, it really has, it has influenced my practice and gave me the courage to kind of be more political. Excellent. So we're going to have to end it there. As yeah. we've run out of time. But um, uh, one of the things is, for anything you've heard tonight, you can follow up, you can get the names of the bands, you can understand who is talking about what positions as well. I'm just going to read this out for you as well. So, um, ah, right. So we've been asked a question here by Yvette. You mentioned the influence of Haiti and Assemblage. Were African-American artists Romare Breeden, I hope I said that right, and Faith Ringgold contributors to, develop, sorry, contributors to the development of your work? I do know Faith. I, I didn't. I didn't pick up on the first name, but I do know Faith Ringel's uh, work. Yes. Um, I've I've seen her work. Is I, I don't know if it's influenced. It, it probably has influenced my practice, but I can't recall a particular piece mm. in which I've looked at at Ringel's right, work okay. and thought, oh, okay, mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw on that. Although I am starting to move into textiles, and mm. she did lots of textile work, mm. um, so yeah. Isn't she a quiltist, or yeah. and she had an exhibition yeah. here at the Serpentine eight, eighteen months ago, two years ago. Serpentine, I think it was probably it's probably a bit longer than that was it now longer than that? Right, okay. we've, got, we've got the pandemic, haven't we? So I oh, think probably, it was probably, actually, yeah, probably just before probably t two and a half years oh, ago, okay, maybe yeah. something yeah, like this. Bad, yeah. So Joyce, yeah. I mean, I've got so much more that we wanted to speak to you about as well. But we've run out of time, unfortunately. I'll just double check that, actually. Because um, audience, are you still there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got two more minutes. Oh, two more minutes. So, is there another question? No. Okay. So, I'm going to ask you another question. In fact, how would you like to end? I mean, you you talked about your slides. You talked about your work as well. Let's end on a really good question. Legacy. You talked about the legacy of your family. You talked about your dad coming here and marrying your mum. Yeah. As well. How much of that does that play in your life now? Well, I, 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 like I mentioned, they split up when I was a year and a half, and so I had the fortunate uh, experience of having two, sep two, two different cultures, yeah. and so that definitely does play through in my work. Yeah. I'm always drawing on... I, I, I appropriate images of, of the Queen a lot, mm -hmm. and so that loans, my, it loans itself to my British identity, mm. and then I usually overimpose images of the Queen with black culture, and so that loans, my, loans itself to my uh, Jamaican identity. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that relationship between Britain and Jamaica is quite close, even though it's, it's had lots of conflicts yeah. and, we've, um, and we've had to face lots of um, um, issues in, in arriving in, in the UK. Um, you know, you, you, can't, you still can't uh, disengage from that, especially, mm. especially for myself as a mixed, mixed heritage person. Yeah. It's you know, part of my makeup, and so it's always coming through in my practice. Yeah, and I think there's one more thing that we'll end on as well, which um, 
obviously, as young as you look and as young as I look, we're both actually mature students yeah, as well. Yeah, we are mature students, yeah. which is quite relevant. It would, it's just quite relevant because that's that's a new, you know, it's a new it's a new program, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That it's only just been introduced in yeah. the last. In the it, it came in two thousand and seventeen. Yeah. And we both fought with black identity, self-identity as well, understanding social identity. Yeah. You know, it's not a plug for the course, by the way, but it was just talking about how we, you know, we did black studies both later in our lives and how it has an influence because we're now able to talk in a space about our lived experience. Yeah. And I think we talked about that influences yeah. your art as well. Yeah. I think we used the phrase um, autochronographical uh, practice. <laughs> If I can say autoethnographical, well, practice. autoethnographical. Yeah, oh, right, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's two mistakes I've made today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So do you want to end on that note and talk about what I think you know, young students who are watching this today, how we can inspire them to? It's never too late to attend university. No, never too late to no, attend. We university. still get like, well, you know, especially if you're young. And we get, we <laughs> you're still fine. get discount tra you get travel. To, if you can still, <laughs> yeah, if you get to this age, you can still do it. Then yeah. you know, yeah. no excuse really. And it is really important because one of the things learning for today is for young children to understand. You know, it's a shame to see that like 73 years on from the Windrush, it took 70 years for it to be recognised by the government. Yeah. You know, so we've had three years of National Windrush Day. Let me hear a woo woo. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, if you can get out support events like this, there's plenty of events taking place. Unfortunately, COVID had stopped that, but there are still plenty of events. And, you know, get involved and understand the Windrush. Understand why they're calling it a scandal, but understand how it became a scandal yeah. because it relates back to race relation acts and laws that were passed that created this. You know, people are looking around and going, oh, how did it happen? It happened because certain people created this and those people like us have had to live through those experiences as well. But well, that's a story for another day. So yeah, we'd just like to you, take it. Joyce, thank you so much for your chat, your presentation today. Thank you. And I'd like to thank, I've got to go backwards in order. I've got, call me unique. <laughs> okay, Irish. <laughs> Sue Brown. <laughs> Fitz, Fitzroy Karen. <laughs> Jamal, whose surname I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> Jamal. And I would also like to thank all the technicians here today, Lindsay from the Birmingham Museums Trust, um, Sandra Griffiths, Nick as well. And I think Sandra's going to end as well. She's going to sing for us. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be singing. <laughs>